Max says, thanks for entertaining for the last hour. I need to go net to control duties and probably should pay attention to that. So uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us. You know, oh, thank uh, speaking, you very much. speaking of net controls, I got an email. Actually, I think it was it was it was a comment on one of the videos. But um, Hal, Hal Collins, he asked, um, any tips on getting more club members to do net control? or even check into the nets. Uh, these, he says he's got their club has 30 members, 10 to 12 check-ins, four or five net controls. I suggested win a free meal, <laughs> but my cook vetoed that immediately. <laughs> wow. You have your own cook? Must be yeah, nice. I wish I was that lucky. Um, right. It's a great question. You know, getting people... Um, I've done, I've done, you know, net manager duties for our club for many years. And, um, it is, it's, it's tough. It's, um, getting people to check into the net's not so bad, you know, publicizing the net and helping people, you know, get on the air is, is basically what you need to do that. But getting people as net controls is to be a net control is the hard part. Uh, because especially if they're a newer um, amateur radio operator, they might they, they they've got a certain level of hesitancy. You know, it's it, it it's one thing to kind of you know grab your HT and and check into the net. A lot of people can you know can overcome that fear pretty easily, but to you know grab that microphone and be the net control and listen you know listen while other people check in. And, and copy all of those call signs and um, pat, copy that traffic and 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 whatnot that just it's just like the um, I don't know the anxiety level just it just creeps up or something so uh, I guess the, the 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 best thing to do is if you've got people that have a you know a remote interest in being a net control is to tell ask ask them if they want a shadow, you know, a um, more experienced person, you know, sit down next to you in the, in the shack so they can see you working, you know, with pen and paper or keyboard and um, get that, and get that, get that feeling of how, you know, behind, behind the radio of, of how it is to be the, to be the net control station and then offer to them when it's your turn, I'll come and sit with you while well, you're net control, so we can, you know, I'll help you out on that on that first time, and hopefully, you know, maybe that's a, that's a good way to kind of lower the, lower that anxiety, you know, sort of help each other out. Um, let them shadow first, and then you can shadow them the second time, and then you know, hopefully the third time they become they become proficient proficient in in being uh, net control operators. Yeah, um, I, I remember my first time. Well, I guess, I guess it's a little bit different for me because. I came from a radio background, actually, like broadcasting. So, like, mm -hmm. put a put a microphone in front of me, I'll talk. Obviously, <laughs> right? Um, so, it, like, it, okay, you got a script. I got a couple of things. I got queued up. Okay, rock and roll. Let's do it. And you know, after the first one, I got through it relatively unscathed, and it went pretty well after that. And then mm -hmm. I got stuck doing it for the next seven years. <laughs> well, Three I've been doing them after a month. 23 you know? years so <laughs> yeah so like when i had that, when i had the shack fire that was my uh year and a half ago i said well that's a perfect opportunity because I, I lost my hf or my vhf for, for a little while i said yeah i'm going to be not able to do the because i was down to one once a month at that point in time i'm mm -hmm. not going to be able to do the nuts anymore i never came back <laughs> not that i tried burning my shack down on purpose to get out of doing that so, oh jeez. <laughs> just saying um, but uh it, it's not that hard it really isn't and i know some people get some stage right like the people so many people get their licenses and they're so scared to make a contact to begin with much mm -hmm. less be the center of attention for everyone for 15 to 30 minutes it's tough so, it, it really yeah. is it it's but you know what? You, you have you have conversations with all these people at the at your local club meetings, anyways. You know, by the second or third net, mm -hmm. you recognize the voices before they even give your give their call. 
Yeah, right. I've I've gotten you know it's I've some of these regulars, they, I, you know, I, I hear the first letter of their call sign and I've I've already got it written down. <laughs> and mm -hmm. So yeah, you, you, that's how used it is to get to people. But, but you made a really good point. You know, if you're if you're regularly going to the club meetings and you're seeing those people face to face, mm -hmm. you should you should be able to get on the air and run that net i would i would yeah. think because mm -hmm. that shouldn't be any more any more frightening talking to them in person than it would be talking to them over the year at least i would hope so i don't know right you know and remember you know if you screw up you're an amateur get over it <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. no, but it's, it's, I, I still i still screw up <laughs> oh yeah everyone screws up everyone slaughters a call sign everyone yeah. forgets to do something big deal we all get over it the the ham radio police will not be knocking at your door and arresting you at all. No, nope, zero. Absolutely not. Yep. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's uh, we've got a couple things here. Ryan says I love being in that control. You know, it's it's fun. I I enjoy it too. Um, Don says I'm running two meter and HF nets. Lots of fun, like playing talk show host. There we go. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a it's like funny a story. So we have a long running net here in Central Wisconsin, and I tuned in at nine o'clock one night and like. I couldn't hear anything like what was going on. And then I kind of heard something like the squash was kind of cracking. Um, and the net control was running on simplex. <laughs> so I could hear them on, on one, four, six, eight, two, just barely. And then someone called him and said, Hey, you're running simplex idiot. He was, oh, he yeah. was, on, he was on the output. <laughs> yeah. He was running simplex. And, Whoops. Yeah, you know, it happens. Um, so even the guys who've done it for 20 years screw up sometimes. <laughs> Ken's got a great story. Our local net, the net control operator is blind and he has everyone's voice memorized. Oh, man. He keeps it all in his head. We you had know, people, a... Yeah, people with disabilities like who are blind, they remember everything somehow. And it, it's like a sixth sense that develops. Um, so I, I yeah. believe that 110%. When we, when I first started twenty some years ago, when I first started being net control for our local net, we had a one of our one of our our um, net control stations was blind, and um, he was the best net control we ever had, because he yeah he remembered everybody, um, and he was able to just copy everything, all the traffic and 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 whatnot, and and his friend he he was the the the. Greatest conversationalist. It was the smoothest, the smoothest net control we ever had. And um, <laughs> always a, it, it was, it's, it, it was such a shame that we lost him. You know when we, when we did. But um, yeah, so I, I know what you mean there, Ken. Um, and he you knows know, the CW at thirty-three <laughs> words a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that too, actually. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> VHX simplex nets are a lot of fun and good practice when the repeater goes down. We've done those a few times. Mm -hmm. Those are really eye-opening to um, hear. You know, you're, you're, it's, it's surprising how far your signal can actually carry. Um, mm -hmm. If you've got a base, you know, a, a, a decent radio with a base antenna. So it's... <laughs> Um, you know, one more thing too, uh, getting more people involved with the nets. Um, this is something that I had, had thought of, you know, when um, I got that original message is that um, if you've got a lot of new hams coming in, they may not have the best station to start with. And maybe they're getting, you know, maybe they're working with an HT or something like that. And if you want to kind of mentor them and grow them into, you know, being active on the net as a, as a uh, check-in station, but also eventually as a net control, you want to try to help improve their home station. And the best way to do that is to, you know, make sure they've got a good external antenna and a hookup. Even if they're using a handheld, at least if, they, if they've got an external antenna, you know, they'll, they've, they've got a higher likelihood of getting into the net, being a solid, strong signal, and then moving on into upgrading you know, maybe their station and um, becoming that net control operator. So we've had, you know, when we've, we've a few times we've had a bunch of new hams come in and we've done antenna parties where everybody's come to my house and we've built antennas, J pole antennas. And um, it was a lot of, it was a lot of fun and you get to know people and everybody goes home with an antenna. So right. 
Or <laughs> if you got a loaner radio, like I got loaner radios around here. Here you go. Here's a radio. By the way, next Wednesday, <laughs> you're net control. <laughs> you don't have an excuse anymore. <laughs> KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.